Good morning, everybody. Lovely to see everybody here this morning. Thank you for braving the cold. Uh, apologies that it's, it's slightly chilly still inside the church. The, the heating had decided it didn't want to cooperate this morning. It is on now, so the good news is that by the time we're going out through the door, it'll be nice and warm again. But sure, we can survive that. That's why I put a wee message out very quickly this morning saying, please put your coat on and wrap up warm. But welcome this morning. Come together as church family to, to worship together and to celebrate together today as well, because this is communion today also. So as we come and as we later on sit around the Lord's table together, um, we trust and pray that we would know God's peace and blessing. The announcements are very simple this morning. Um, there's a session meeting tomorrow night, uh, which will happen by Zoom. So elders, you got the invitation okay. Um, whenever the elders will be discussing uh, just getting everything up and running again. So it's a quiet week around the building as such this week, but for all our organizations, um, keep tuned and we'll have announcements coming following the session meeting. Again, if there's any pastoral issues, please do not hesitate to get in touch. But the good news is I've got a list of birthdays this morning. So this incoming week, we have birthdays for Jack Irvine, Heather Orr, Alan Fraser, Paul Moore, Paul Stewart, Ben Scandrett, and John Wolfe. So there you go now. So happy birthday to you all. Let's pause and let's pray together. Father, thank you this morning as we gather to worship you, uh, that you are with us, that we know your presence, that Lord, even though the building is cold, we feel the warmth of you with us. And Lord, we just pray that as we worship together, you would truly move in our hearts. Father, for those who are celebrating birthdays this week, we thank you. We think of Jack and Heather and Alan and Paul and of Paul and Ben and John. I just ask that you be with them and their families, that you would bless them now and always. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. You know, as we gather to worship this morning, we have the assurance that God is with us. There are so many different passages through the Bible where God is speaking either through the Psalms or with Jesus speaking as well. He, where he reassures us that when we gather, he is with us. One of those is Matthew 18. And we have those very well-known uh, words of verse 20. Where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. We know this morning that as we gather, we don't just gather as a group of friends. We don't just gather because oh, it's just a habit that we do. We gather because we know as we do so that God is here, that he is with us, that he puts his arms around us, that he holds us close, that he shows us his love. So let us worship God now as we come together and as we will sing and praise him. We'll keep our masks on as we, as we praise, but we can stand to do so. The words that we know so well, can we put the words up on the screen in the first verse? How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. You know, we've just celebrated Christmas, the coming of Christ. This morning we celebrate communion, what Christ has done for us. So let us celebrate that, that let us sing about that using these words. Let us worship God together. Yeah. 
Let us come and let us pray. Father, we thank you that we worship here this morning because of your love for us. We thank you that we can do this because of the price that's been paid by your son. Dear God, you love us and care for us so much. And for that, we are so grateful, we are so thankful. But Lord, we know at times we are forgetful about that and at times we don't say thank you. So Lord, this morning we say thank you for all that you have done for us, for how you have poured out that love upon us. And Lord, as we worship here in this building, as we worship online, as people watch the feed today and in later days, again, we just pray that we would truly know your peace and blessing with us. A real sense that you are in our midst. That we can hand everything over to you because you're the one who understands and who cares for us. Father, thank you this morning. And continue with us now, we pray. In Christ's name. Amen. Boys and girls, <clears throat> the good news this morning is Sunday school is on. The even better news is that the heat's working upstairs and it's nice and warm. So, uh, sorry adults, no stampede out to Sunday school this morning. You're not kids, you've got to stay with me. So, but before you do that, boys and girls, I have to ask, I want to ask you a couple of questions. So, are you wide awake this morning? Yes? Let me see if I can show you a picture and ask you if anyone knows, it's a boat, if anyone knows what type of boat this is. A sailboat? Very good, not quite. Joe? A fishing boat? Well done. Has anyone here ever been fishing? No? I think some of the adults might have been fishing at some stage. Can you imagine if you were out in a nice quiet spot fishing this morning? What do you need to go fishing? You need a fishing rod. Did you see my slides this morning? What else might you need to go with your fishing rods? It's for catching fish. Yes, well done. You need to put something else onto your fishing rod. What else do you need to put onto the fishing rod? Joe. Baits. That will come, but you need to do something before that. How about putting on a fishing rig? Yep, what does the hook tie on to, but? Fishing line. And then whenever you've got your fishing rod, you've got your fishing reel, and you've got your line, you're still missing something. You're missing something that will attract the fish, aren't you? So how about something like that? Doesn't that look nice and shiny? And it's got all these hooks on it as well to hook the fish. That's sometimes called a lure, or depending if you do a different sort of fishing, you might call it a fly. Or maybe if you go fishing the good old-fashioned way, it might just be a plain hook with a worm and maybe a limpet on it as well. Something that will attract the fish. Well, boys and girls, do you know that Jesus said something to his disciples a long, long time ago? He said this to them, and this is what you're going to learn about this morning out in Sunday school. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Or some people might have learned it in an older version that says, I will make you fishers of men. Jesus was telling his disciples that he was going to use them to draw people to himself. Now, if you think of that fishing rods, if you think of that lure that's on the end, that, that nice bright fish with hooks on it, that's designed to attract the fish. But whenever we are out being the fishers, God says it's our lives, boys and girls, that attract people to him. If people can see how much God cares for us, how much he loves us, if he can see how we rely upon him, if people can see our hearts, just how we love God and how he loves us, then that's what will attract people to God. You know, people watch us all the time, boys and girls. Does the teacher watch you in school? Parents watch you at home? And sometimes parents will say, whenever you're out and about, behave because everyone's watching. 
for all really nosy and we all watch each other. Well, it's the same for us as Christians. People watch what we do. And it's how we live our lives that attracts people to God. And that's what makes us fishers of people. That's a story that you're going to learn about this morning. And I trust that as you hear that story this morning, that you would understand it, that you would learn about it, and that you would want to attract people to God. So do you think you can go out and learn that from me this morning? You're all very shy this morning. Well, here, I know what you need to do. You need to wake up this morning. So who's going to help me sing? Me. Yeah, well done. We've got a song which you know, which is called I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. It's got some actions to it as well if you want to follow along with the screen. But let's stand and let's sing this one together. Done, and thank you. Okay, boys and girls, you want to go out to Sunday school this morning? It's a bit warmer out there, I promise you. It is. I'm going to read God's word together this morning. Our reading is from Isaiah chapter 1. Um, Phil, I might go on a verse or two more than what's there. I'm not sure where it stop, cuts off, but I'm going to go on verses 1 to 20. I'm going to start a series um, just at the start of the year on Isaiah um, and on the visions that he has. But let's just read the start of Isaiah chapter 1 together. The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear me, you heavens, listen, earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but I have rebelled against me. The ox knows its master, the donkey its owner's manger. But Israel does not know, my people do not understand. Woe to the sinful nation, a people whose guilt is great, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord's, they have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on him. Why should you be beaten any more? Why do you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured, your whole heart afflicted. From the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there is no soundness, only wounds and welts and open sores, not cleansed or bandaged or soothed with olive oil. Your country is desolate, your cities burned with fire, your fields are being stripped by foreigners right before you, laid wastes 
has been overthrown by strangers. Daughter Zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard, hut in a cucumber field like a under siege. Unless the Lord Almighty had left us some survivors, we would have become like Sodom. We would have been like Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instructions of our God, you people of Gomorrah. The multitudes of your sacrifices, what are they to me? says the Lord. I have more than, had more than enough of burnt offerings of rams and of the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you? This trampling of my courts. New moons, Sabbaths, Sabbaths and convocations, I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. This week, there's been a call again through the church to pray for our land, to pray for those who work in the front lines of many different organizations, whether it be um, the hospitals and healthcare, whether it be retail who keep us fed because of the current situations, to pray for our schools and our school leaders, to pray for safety for all in light of the rising cases of coronavirus. Let us do that this morning. But as well through this world, there are many places of conflict and violence, places which are struggling. Kazakhstan is one of those examples. We have supported in the past before missionaries who have been in Kazakhstan and they still have connections out there. They're saying that even though their organization is safe, so many people have lost their lives and there is a lot of oppression. There's a lot of cruelty going on. They ask for us to pray for that land, to pray for God's people, and to pray for safety. So let's come together as God's people and let's pray this morning. Let us pray. Dear God and loving Heavenly Father, as we have read your word this morning, as we have read about the rebellion of your people, and how you even struggled to hear their prayers. Lord, we thank you for the promises this morning from your word that you hear what we say, that your ears are open, that you take in what we share with you, what we bring to you, and that you answer those prayers. We thank you, Father, that you are that faithful God. Lord, we thank you for your, your protection that you have had upon our family here in Strain. And Lord, we pray for continued protection for all. We know that different times there have been members of our family here who have had COVID. And Lord, we know what that means for a lot of people and the struggles that that brings. Lord, thank you for healing and for recovery for our folks. And continue to, to look after us as we come and go from this place. Lord, may we be conscious of those who are around us. May we look out for one another. May we be considerate. And Lord, whenever we see people who are struggling, may we care for them, may we be able to help them. Lord, our hospitals at this time are full. Our healthcare workers are under so much strain. Our retail sector at times are struggling to get food in place. Our teachers are 
having real difficulty covering classrooms and the staff who who assist them and work alongside them lord it is just so difficult for them all we thank you for everybody who day in and day out works for us and helps us helps our children who keep all these systems running and up and going and lord we pray again for strength and for protection for them as they do so Lord, we know that staff in schools and staff in hospital have lost their lives during this time. And for their families, our hearts go out to them. Please, Lord, again, protect those who are still working. Keep them safe, we pray. Lord, as we open our eyes, as we look around the world, we remember Kazakhstan this morning. We think about what is going on there and the threat that they are under of invasion as well. And the oppression that's been going on. And Lord, the terrible things that have happened. Father, for your children who are out there, for those who are foreigners working in that land, bringing your word, again, please protect them. For the nationals who live in that place, who are your children, Lord, as they try to reach out to others, again, please protect them. And Lord, may they bring a sense of peace and calm in an otherwise difficult situation. Lord, thank you that in everything you are in control. Thank you that in everything you are God. And Lord, we can always rely upon you. Lord, as we come to your word now, help us to see and to hear and to understand, may it encourage us, may it challenge us. Precious name that we pray. Amen. I mentioned schools there this morning, just as we think about schools coming back. And I wonder, what was your least favorite subject in school? Or what one did you struggle with the most? Um, For me, I think about history, which my son probably will give off about, saying he loves history so much. But um, if you have that program, which one of the TV shows put on, will that go up, the first slide? may do may do oh there it is horrible histories that sums it up for me trying to remember names and dates it's always difficult isn't it let's have a bit of fun this morning if i put up the date 1066 what does it mean i'll let hastings well done slightly more difficult but closer to home if i put up these years 1845 to 1852 Got a historian here? Okay, right, let's try this one now. This is really close to home. This is the most important one. That won't go on. Can you flick that on one more, Phil? If it'll, yep. And let me see if it'll go on for me here. 25th of May, 1954. Silence. Nobody knew this one. No. Nope. Go on, Phil, flick it on. We'll let them know what it is. The foundation of Tato. That's a bit of local history. You didn't know that local history. How quickly we forget things at times, isn't it? How things stick in our head that we want to stick in our heads, but how quickly we forget other things. The book of Isaiah very much is, is all about that. Isaiah was a great prophet. Quite often the book of Isaiah is referred to as the fifth gospel. So much of it is about the coming of Christ. But also so much of it is about what a prophet does. A prophet reminds the people of their past. The things that have happened. Reminds them about where they are right now. And quite often brings them a warning for the future. When Isaiah is writing, God's people are fractured. They are broken. If you were to take a map and you look at that, you see the two kingdoms. We quite often think of Israel or Israelites and we think of one nation, but you had the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. And you had how they were divided in two. You've got the ten tribes in the north and the two tribes in the south. And during this time, whenever Isaiah is writing, as it states at the very beginning, He's writing to challenge the southern kingdom, to challenge Judah and the city of Jerusalem. But as he does that, 
he does remind them how much they have forgotten. In verse 3, let me read it to you. The ox knows its master, the donkey its owner's manger. But Israel does not know, my people do not understand. How quickly they have forgotten how faithful God was to them. How quickly they've forgotten what God has done for them. How quickly they choose to leave it behind. All that blessing. All that outpouring that God put upon them. And they turn their back upon him. And they neglect him. You know, as I read that, it made me think about how often do we forget? How often do we let things slip and we don't recall them? How often do we forget what God has done for us? When we think about those difficult times that we've been going through and how we cried out to God and we asked him for help and how he was faithful to us. And maybe he brought someone alongside us who would support us, somebody who would walk with us, somebody who understood what was going on. And God gave us the support that we needed and helped us through that time. Just like the complete nation, the lives, how God did it with them and how quickly they turned their back upon him. Look at whenever Moses is getting the Ten Commandments, how quickly they turn to an idol, how quickly they forget. They forget how God led them out of Egypt. They forget how God provided for them as they were doing that. And they turn their back on him. Have we forgotten how God has provided for us at times? Have we forgotten how those times whenever we cry out and we say that we need something and God meets that need? And yet we don't share that blessing with others. We don't bring an offering or a tithe. Oh, I'll do it some other time. And we forget and it slips and it goes. How often do we forget? How often do we forget how God has protected us? When danger is all around us, and yet we've got a heavenly father who puts his arms around us and holds us close. The people who Isaiah is writing to have forgotten all about that. They've forgotten just how good God is to them. They've forgotten how God had forgiven them and transformed them. And what about us? Do we forget at times how God has forgiven us and transformed us? Do we forget about the fact that we are sinners? And yet, because of what Christ has done for us, we're forgiven. We are washed whiter than snow. And every day God is renewing us and changing us. How often do we forget that fact? How often do we just let it slip? And we just get caught in our own little worlds and forget what's going on around us. If we're honest, we do it far too often, don't we? If we're honest, yeah, we can all identify with those points. And yet, God loves us. Yet, God doesn't give up on us. God doesn't turn his back on us. In fact, he has removed all the barriers that would come between us because of what he's done through Christ. Something which we will celebrate this morning. When Isaiah is writing, it's really interesting how he says, I reared, uh, how he says, um, Israel does not know, my people do not understand. Woe to a sinful nation, a people whose guilt is great. And in that sense, God is talking to all of the people. It's not that he's just talking to the northern kingdom or just talking to the southern kingdom. But God is talking to all of his people. Because God knows that this word that he gives to Isaiah, as Isaiah takes it, and as Isaiah gives it with the people in the south, it will spread. You're living in a time whenever not very many people were able to read and write. So people were very good at listening. 
think that's a skill that we need to develop better each time. They were excellent at listening because what they did was they listened to what was said to them and they shared it with others. So these visions that Isaiah had, that he spoke out, would very quickly spread through all the people. Everyone would hear it. And everyone should be challenged by it. And we're the same with God's word. How many of us feel separated from other Christians? How many of us feel that we are divided? All we've got to do is count the number of churches in town to know that. But yet, we are united because of Christ. United because of what God has done. The northern and the southern kingdom, they fell out with each other. They went their own ways. The northern kingdom set up their own capital. The south kept Jerusalem. They kept the temple. But yet all of them were God's chosen people. All of them have a part to play. All of them have a role. And Isaiah, as he talks to them, is going to remind them of that. Remind them of the role which they have. Remind them how they are blessed. But tell them as well how they're doomed. Because they don't turn back to God. I went on to verse 20 because those last few verses are so important. Let me read to you again from verse 16 down. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your, take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. God through his eye doesn't challenge the people in a different way. He gives them a challenge which they know. Something that they've heard from the foundation of their nation. To care for those who can't care for themselves. To care for those who are in need. To help others. He says, you've forgotten the fundamentals. You've forgotten the basics. And then he says this. Come now and let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Lo, your sins are like scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. God told them, I will cleanse you. I will heal you. I will wash you. Just come to me. Isn't that what we're going to do this morning as we come to communion? Isn't that what we're going to remember this morning? as we break bread and as we share wine, we will remember what God has done for us through Jesus. We will remember how his sacrifice for us is the ultimate sacrifice, the cleansing sacrifice. How whenever Christ's body was broken for us in Calvary, how whenever his blood was shed for us, that we were washed as white as snow, that we would become like wool, clean, white, and pure. That even though we are broken people, if we have God and if we follow God, then we are his children. Isaiah, as he shares with these people, will remind him of that time and time again. He will tell them how if you don't turn to God, you're doomed. Don't we say the same to other folks today? If you don't let Christ in, if you don't accept him, you're heading to a lost eternity. You're heading to hell. It's not very politically correct to say that word now, is it? We've forgotten that word. We've forgotten the challenge of what it is to not follow God's. We've forgotten that in Jesus' words, we're either saved or lost. Today we celebrate the fact that we are saved. 
today we show others that they can be saved if they will accept what Christ has done for them. As we go through the book of Isaiah, I pray that that would be the challenge that will come to us. As we look at what he says, and, and, and it's broken down into so many different areas. And we'll take some time and just look at those week by week. But I pray that it really would challenge us, that it would make us stop and think, that God would work in our hearts and our lives, and through it, draw us closer to him. So right now, I'm going to ask you to pause, be quiet for a moment, and I will lead us in prayer. Father, thank you for all that you have done for us. Still our hearts now, we pray, draw us close to you. Help us to know your presence beside us. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to sit and listen to the words of a modern piece. I want you to listen to the words because this, this piece is called Grace. And the words are incredible. And just as we come to communion this morning to hear these words, let's use them as a prayer. But as we come this morning, we are a family. As a family, we will celebrate communion. If, you, if you've forgotten the bread and wine this morning, don't worry. We're going to be following through some words on the screen and we'll follow those through together. But we are a family. So this morning as a family, we're delighted to welcome David and Florence and Julie Beatty into full membership here in Strain. So as we come as that family this morning, let's hear these words. Let's use them as a prayer. Oh, 
Some words are going to appear on the screen. The words that are, are light, I will be saying by myself. The words that are in bold, I invite you to say along with me. But as you look at that picture of the bread and the wine, hear these words said by Jesus, taken from John chapter 6. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. <clears throat> I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. We are the people of God. We are the body of Christ. We are scattered and the body of Christ is broken. But as we gather, the body of Christ is remembered. So together, we gather in obedience to Jesus' command to remember and to share together in breaking bread and drinking wine in remembrance of the death of Christ. Each piece of bread that we eat was once scattered across the fields and the grain that God gave to grow has become for us the bread of life. Each sip of wine that we drink was once many vines, and the grapes that God gave to grow have become for us the new wine of God's kingdom. In our communion with one another, we are fed with the bread of heaven that sustains us, and we drink the wine of gladness that brings us joy. Hear these words taken from Paul as he writes to the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, in the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So now, following Jesus' example and command, we will take this bread and this wine the ordinary things of the world which Christ will make special. And as he said a prayer before sharing, let us pray. God, of all those who are scattered and broken, you call us to wholeness. We thank you for your love, demonstrated in the giving of your Son, that we might be united with you. We thank you that in Christ, you enter into the pain, uncertainty, and fear of our world, and that your arms are open in loving embrace, gathering us to you as a mother hen gathers her brood under her wing, as a shepherd gathers his flock. We thank you for bread and wine, symbols and signs for us today of your faithfulness to your people through all generations. Amen. Jeremiah said, Hear the word of the Lord, you nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. He who scattered Israel will gather them and will watch over his flock like a shepherd. Lord, this bread was scattered over the hills, was brought together and became one loaf. So, Lord, may your church be united and brought together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. 
Remember, Christ said, this is my body, which is broken for you. So let us together share this bread, remembering the broken body of Christ, the body of Christ. Again, Jeremiah says, Then all the Judeans returned from all the places to which they had been scattered and came to the land of Judah. They gathered wine and summer fruits in great abundance. Jesus said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us remember the blood of Christ that was shed for us the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this bread and this wine. We thank you that we have shared them together, shared your, the body of your son Jesus broken for us in Calvary, shared the wine which reminds us of his blood which flowed down that hillside, the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Lord, through this sacrifice of your son, he was our substitute. He took the price of our sin. Through his death and resurrection, we are restored in our relationship with you. And one day, Father, we know we will be united with you in heaven. We know that you are making ready our place to be with you. Father, this is love so amazing, so incredible, that we, we find it difficult to but Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us. Lord, help us in how we live our lives each day to, to, to witness to those who are around us, to show them how much that you love them so that they too, Lord, would come to put their faith and trust in you. Lord, as we shortly leave this building, we ask that you would take us home safely, that you would take us with your blessing, that you would gather us again next week in your will as we continue to grow closer to you and to learn more about you. But Lord, that for the week that lies ahead, that your hand of blessing would be upon each and every one of us, that you would keep us safe and then help us just as we seek to live our lives for you. Father, thank you, for it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. From heaven, you came, helpless babe, entered the world, your glory healed, not to be served, but to serve, and give your life that we might live. These words sum up so well what Christ has done for us, so well what we have celebrated communion and these are words of victory and celebration so as i invite you to stand and to sing these words with me 
may your heart be filled with joy. May your face behind the face mask be beaming. And regardless of whether you can make a tune or not, sing it out from the bottom of your boots as we worship and as we praise God. Let's worship him together. Let us pray. Now, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore, we pray. Amen. Folks, thanks for being here this morning. As normal, our one way system is in operation. And as you leave the building, just give each other that wee bit of space. Um, I don't think the temperature will be as encouraging you to hang around this morning indoors anyway. Um, but may you know God's peace and God's blessing.